Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, my thoughts on the Goodreads Awards Horror Shortlist for 2023. So it's Goodreads Awards time again, and indeed this video will go up on the day that the winners are announced. Um, so this, as, as with the Goodreads Awards video I did a few months ago, is part of a broader collaboration with a wonderful group of booktubers um, who are getting together to talk about their kind of specialist genres and subjects um, and reflect on the Goodreads Awards nominees for this year. Um, so each of us is looking at a different uh, genre um, and talking about the, the, the books that have ended up being shortlisted and then I think we'll, we'll be reacting to the winner as well. So I'm Phil filming this um, a few days before the winner is announced, this part of the video. Um, I will film my reaction as well and, and add that at the end. Um, so as you might expect, uh, I'm covering horror um, for this, but I'm doing I'm doing it in partnership uh, with another channel. So I'm doing this with Bethany from Beautifully Bookish Bethany. Um, so neither of us had read all 10 of the books um, on the shortlist. So we, divided, we decided to divide and conquer. Um, so I have read seven of them. I think Bethany has read seven of them as well. So there's a little bit of overlap between the two of us. Um, but there will be three books that I will just talk very briefly about because I haven't actually read them. If you want to hear more about them, if you check out Bethany's video, um, she will have more on those particular books and her views on those. Um, and we'll be interested to see as well how our views differ. I think we've got quite different tastes. So for the books where we've both read them, um, I'm very interested to see what her thoughts are um, versus mine. So anyway, let me talk about um, the 10 books. But before I do that, so two reflections. Um, that I've, you know, two things I felt when I was looking at this list of, of 10 books. So the first is it's a wonderfully diverse list. So there's uh, a number of authors of colour on there. There's a lot of female authors on there. And as someone who grew up, you know, reading horror in like the 80s and into the 90s, when it was a very, very much a genre dominated by white men, um, it's wonderful to see that it's such a diverse, uh, you know, such a diverse genre now. Um, and that you know authors from all different sorts of backgrounds um are being you know championed and recognized in awards like this um so that was fantastic the other thing that struck me when i looked at the um, when i looked at the list was i don't read very many new books so of the 10 um when i kind of decided to be involved in this collaboration and started talking about it with the other creators i'd only read i think three of the books um yeah, I'd only read three of the three of the ten so far, which suggests to me that I don't read a huge number of new books, which probably isn't the surprise. I tend to read more older stuff and, and you know, particularly stuff from kind of the middle of the 20th century, I guess, rather than new stuff. So I do try and read some new books, particularly in, in horror, because it's a genre I enjoy. But but I'm not necessarily as up to up to speed and up to date with the latest releases as a lot of other uh, booktubers are. Um, so yeah, those those are my two thoughts when looking at the list. So anyway, what I'm going to do in this video, I'll talk about all ten of the books, um, give my impressions of the ones that I've read, um, and then at the end, uh, as I said earlier, I will film my reaction to the winner, um, and I will give when I get to the end of talking about the books, I'll tell you the book I think should win. Um, we'll see whether or not um, the the masses uh, who vote on the on the Goodreads Award agree with me. Um, and it's an interesting thing, isn't it, the Goodreads Award, because it is very much driven by um, popularity, if that makes sense. So because it's voted for by people, um, you know, by people who are members of Goodreads, books that have been read by more people are more likely to win. So it's not necessarily a definitive, uh, you know, definitive, definitive stamp of quality that book wins a, a Goodreads award. Um, it's more that it's, a, you know, a book that a lot of people have read and enjoyed, which, you know, can often be the same thing. Anyway, I'll stop rambling uh, and get on with the list. So the three books then that I haven't read um, are House With Good Bones by T. Kingfisher, which from what I can gather is, is a Southern Gothic. So I've read one book by T. Kingfisher. I read, I think earlier this year, um, I read What Moves the Dead, which I thought was excellent. Really, really enjoyed it. I'm keen to read more books by T. Kingfisher, um, but I haven't got to this one yet, but definitely will at some point. 
Um, the other one I haven't read uh, is, or another one that I haven't read rather, is Vampires, Vampires of El Norte uh, by Isabel Cañas. Um, so this seems to be getting mixed reviews. Some people um, I know and respect really, really liked it. Some thought that it was a bit, you know, maybe a bit slight and kind of slightly YA feeling. So this is a, a kind of horror western um, about vampires, I think, on the on the Mexico-US border. So it sounds like a fun concept. It sounds like a book I would like to read. It's got a wonderful cover as well. So that, again, I think is one I will probably get to at some point. Um, and then the other one that I haven't read is one I hadn't heard of at all before it cropped up on this list. Uh, and that's The September House uh, by... Uh, Carissa Orlando which is a a haunted house uh, book it's her her first novel so it's a a, a new author Um, by the sound of it it's got kind of slightly cozy cozy horror cozy mystery type vibe to it Um, so it does sound kind of fun but not necessarily one I would I would rush out to read so those are the three that I haven't read yet as I said um, Bethany has read all of those so check out her video to to hear more about those books Um, Right, so let's move on to the books I have read then. And first I'll talk about the ones I'd read kind of throughout the course of the year. So as I said, there were three that I'd already read um, when I started looking at this list. So those three are, um, let's start with uh, one I've got a physical copy of. Uh, so Holly by Stephen King. All three of these I've done reviews of of the channel, so you can check those out if you want more info on them. Um, so this is an interesting book because I wouldn't necessarily classify this as a horror novel. There's no supernatural element to it at all. It's you know it's definitely got some horrible stuff in it. So it's about a particularly horrific pair of serial killers. Um, so there's there's definitely a horror in here, but it's much more of a kind of mystery thriller book um, than a horror book. I really really enjoyed it. So I thought it was a great read. I think Holly Holly Gibney, who's the central character who returns in this book, having been in a few previous books, is a really interesting and engaging character so she's like a a neurodiverse young woman who's kind of fallen into being a detective um, and but has a you know kind of natural flair for it there's a really good cast of supporting characters as well who you know who help her along in solving this mystery Um, but in particular the villains of the piece are absolutely abominable and and quite enjoyable to read as a result of that lots of people have criticized this book not least in the comments uh, in my video review of it um for the, the amount um, of what is perceived as politics in it. So this is a book set during um, the COVID lockdowns um, and King, you know, very definitely gives his view on, um, you know, on, on COVID and the handling of COVID by, by the US government and on, you know, mask wearing and things like that. And I know a lot of people felt he was a bit too preachy in this book. Personally, I thought he got the balance OK, I thought it was fine. Um, but a lot of people didn't like that. Um, so, yes, Holly, I thought was a, a very decent thriller, very gripping, good century, you know, good, good cast of characters. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, moving on then. So another one I've read uh, was Lone Women by Victor Laval, uh, which I thought was great. So a really, really enjoyable um, engaging, moving, thought-provoking book, um, but also just with some pure, enjoyable kind of pulpy horror at, at its heart as well. Um, so about a young woman um, in kind of, I, I think around the kind of turn of the so beginning of the 20th century, early 20th century, who travels across America to like a, a, a kind of, what's the word, not prospecting, um, like kind of wilderness area um, where she's got, um, she, she's she's bought a house and just wants to uh, kind of work the land and things like that. She has with her this mysterious box, which you know, like a steamer trunk that you know has got something um, something horrific inside it, but it's quite a while before you find out what that is. Um, so again, got some really interesting um, kind of characters that she meets along the way, some great scenes of horror, um, but just also a really thoughtful book about the you know the, the way women were treated at, at that time and it's quite inspirational in a way in, in terms of her determination to to make a life for herself so a book with interesting reflections on on gender and race but also just a fun fun horror novel um so yeah very much enjoyed that one um and then the other one i'd previously read uh, was how to sell a haunted house by grady hendrix which was just i, I thought a perfect 
fun horror novel. So not not particularly deep, not particularly, you know, kind of gut-wrenching or anything like that, but really, really engaging and enjoyable and amusing as well. You know, Grady Hendrix can be very, very funny in his writing. So this is a book about a um, a woman whose parents, uh, who's, who's, is it both her parents? Yeah, her parents have died. Um, she travels across the country to kind of put, put their affairs in order. Um, her mum had this weird collection of puppets um, and it's about her, you know, trying to figure out if, like, if their house is haunted. There's weird stuff going on at their house. Uh, there's a fantastic um, villain uh, who is a puppet. That's a minor spoiler, but I think it's I think it's very well known. So the the monster of the, of this book is a creepy puppet, um, and Grady Hendrix has such fun with that with that character. He's a great great horror villain, um, and I can it, it felt to me when I was reading this not necessarily in a in a cheap way, but it felt like Grady. Hendrix had written it in the hope that it would get adapted into a movie and I can definitely see Pupkin this this creepy puppet character becoming you know the next big like horror movie franchise he was a fantastically enjoyable monster um, but there's also some some really good stuff in the book about the relationship between the, the central character and her brother um, and about their you know their childhood and things like that so all in all just a really fun engaging horror read one of one of the most enjoyable books I've read this year I think I really really had a good time with it and I read it you know right at the start of the year and, and still remember it very very fondly um Okay, so those were the those were the three that I had read. So on to the ones that I hadn't read that I've read more recently. Um, so the first of those is Silver Nitrate by Silvia Moreno Garcia, um, which was again really entertaining, really interesting concept. So it's about a cursed film, and I love the idea of cursed films. So in this book, uh, it centres on two characters. Um, both in Mexico City, so a woman who's a like a sound editor in the movies, and a guy who was a soap opera, uh, soap opera actor, but has kind of been less successful recently. And they are like have been friends since childhood. Um, another friend of theirs dies mysteriously, and they start kind of investigating his death, and it all gets kind of wrapped up in um, them investigating this this old old movie. Um, which is like the lost horror horror movie made by a famous director, um, and it, there's a, there's loads of stuff in here about kind of occultism and stuff like that, which is, which is really interestingly done, um, and about um, Nazism and and racism in particular. Um, so yeah, a, an engaging, interesting horror book. It didn't go quite as far with some of the horror elements as I would have liked. Um, I thought it could have been you know creepier and a bit more shocking. Um, but the set, the two central characters are e- extremely engaging and enjoyable to read. So I, I, I did enjoy it a lot. Uh, next then, um, a book I didn't enjoy nearly as, nearly as much, although a lot of people do like this book. And I know, for example, that Bethany liked this book. And uh, that's Rouge by Mona Awad. Um, so Mona Awad is, a, is an author I'd heard a lot about following the success of her book, Bunny. But I, this is the only book of hers that I've read. I may go back and read Bunny, but I didn't have a fantastic time with Rouge, so, so maybe not. So this is a book, um, again, about a, a woman whose, whose mother has died, who is going back to, um, you know, kind of put her affairs in, affairs in order. Um, and it's just, this is just a really, really weird book. And, and I would... I would almost hesitate to call it horror. It's more of a, it felt a lot more to me like literary fiction, um, but there are definite kind of horror and folklore type elements to it. So there's a lot of stuff in here about kind of fairy tales and that kind of thing. There's a ton of stuff in here about like the beauty industry and, you know, beauty standards that are kind of put on to women today so there's definitely some interesting stuff here I suspect that part of the reason I didn't enjoy it that much is I guess I'm kind of not the intended audience this feels to me more like the kind of book that that typically women would enjoy because I think it speaks to the experience of being a woman in the modern world and in particular being a woman of colour in the modern world so it was a book that I thought had some really interesting ideas. There's some sections in it which I thought were really, really effective. In particular, there's a whole 
there's a whole bit about uh, the central character fantasizing about Tom Cruise, which I thought was was really really well done. Um, but overall, it was just a bit too weird for me. I, I got lost um, in all of the the kind of twists and the weirdness, um, and so I think you know didn't enjoy it as much as I would have done if I'd understood it a bit better. Maybe I'm just not quite smart enough for this book. Um, but yeah, it was it was not a um, not a book I I would choose to go back to. Let's put it that way. Um, moving on then, something that was a lot simpler, um, but I also didn't particularly enjoy, uh, and this was My Darling Girl by Jennifer McMahon. So this is a um, a possession novel, but it's a possession novel that feels like a domestic thriller, and indeed the cover makes it look like a domestic thriller, um, but it does have a, a supernatural possession element to it. So... Um, it's about a woman whose mother hasn't died but is dying. Um, so this this theme of of dying parents seems to be uh, dying or dead parents seems to be quite consistent uh, today. Um, so yeah, her mother's dying of cancer. Her mother treated uh, the the central character and her brother appallingly when they were children, but now kind of wants to make her peace and wants to come and spend her last days living with the the, the woman and her family. Um, and you know she does that and there's um I, I don't want to spoil it by going into too much detail but there is a possession element to it um so it was it was fine it was readable um you know it was fairly engaging the the central family were you know kind of reasonably well done but i just felt the possession angle the horror angle kind of felt it all felt like like stuff i'd seen before and the various twists and turns of the plot you know i could predict before they happened so it was it was a, a light, in, entertaining horror novel, but really, you know, nothing special. And I was surprised that it had made the, you know, the top ten. I really didn't think there was anything remarkable about this book at all. Whereas all the other books I've talked about, you know, even even Rouge, which I didn't particularly enjoy, I can see why people would have enjoyed it, and I, therefore I can see why it made this top ten list. Um, My Darling Girl felt like a, you know, just just another. Um, you know, just another paperback that you might pick up and have a reasonably good time with, but nothing at all memorable. Um, right, so on to the final book then. Um, and that is um, Our Share of Night by Mariana Enriquez, which was a fantastic book. I really did think this was an excellent, excellent novel. So this is um, a book set in Argentina um, during the uh, kind of 70s and 80s when, you know, Argentina was in political turmoil, when there was a dictatorship and things like that. So it's set against a very dark backdrop in Argentina's history. Um, who knows what, uh, you know, Argentina's future looks like given uh, recent political events over there. Um, so a really, really interesting book. I mean, a big book. This is the longest book of all of them. It's over 700 pages in, in this hardcover. Um, so it it's a bit of a commitment reading this book and it is a deep dark book as well there is a there's a lot going on in here um both in terms of the the you know kind of politics but also just the you know the development of the plot and the way the story is laid out so it's about a father and son um the father is part of this kind of weird kind of cult-like organization um and has a, a slightly weird relationship with his son and the book kind of skips about in time as the son grows up but then you go there's a bit that kind of flashes back to before he was born to kind of set the scene and, and give you the background of how things you know came came to turn out in the way that they did there's some very very weird and enjoy like enjoyably weird but some very weird horror in here um some really really creepy stuff some yeah some some deeply creepy stuff and, and all the way through it, this dark backdrop of, you know, the kind of like political turmoil in, in, in Argentina and some of the terrible things that happened during that period. So a book that, you know, manages to have a have a political message and weave it into its story without it feeling like it gets in the way of the story. Um, I'm all for books, you know, having a bit of a message, but I think too often, for me at least, they, they, those messages can prevent the story from being enjoyable. Um, that wasn't the case with this book. You know, I was really wrapped up in the lives of, of the central characters and really, you know, cared for them and wanted to know what happened to them. So this is, I, I think, a, a really, really good book. Um, again, I would suggest that, you know, you could make an argument, like with Rouge, that this is 
literary fiction rather than, you know, what I would call like genre horror. Um, so I think of genre horror as being, you know, something more like Silver Nitrate maybe. You know, Silver Nitrate is a book very much rooted in, in the history of the horror genre. It's got loads of, um, you know, loads of references to, to horror movies and things like that in it. Um, How to Sell a Haunted House. You know, Grady Hendrix is clearly someone who, who you know, lives and breathes horror and that comes across in his writing. This feels more like a work of literary fiction that uses interesting horror ideas um, to, you know, to tell its story, but isn't necessarily a pure horror novel, if that makes sense. Um, but I did think it was excellent. So it's interesting to see some books that in previous years, you know, might have been classed as literary fiction, categorised as horror uh, for the Goodreads Awards. And I think that shows something of the the journey horror is going for, uh, going on at the moment and the fact that it is becoming, you know, gradually becoming more popular and more widely read. Um, certainly amongst the, the, the people, the booktubers who are involved in the, um, you know, this collaboration you know, series of videos, a lot of people in our Discord chats were saying um, how they'd really enjoyed quite a lot of the books in the, in the horror shortlist, despite not necessarily being big fans of horror. Um, so I think that's, you know, as, as someone who is a big fan of horror, I think it's fantastic to see the genre gr growing a little bit in terms of, it, of its popularity. Um, so we come to the question then of which is my, which is my favourite book? Which, which book do I think should win the Goodreads Horror Award? And I am really torn on this. I am really, really torn between two books. One of them, as you may have guessed, is this. Um, the other one is How to Sell a Haunted House. Um, and the reason I'm torn is How to, How to Sell a Haunted House is one of the most enjoyable horror novels I've read for ages. It is pure, horrific fun from beginning to end. It just, it's beautifully paced. It's got great characters and, and it's got, you know, it's got horror at its heart and, and does a really good job of making horror engaging and fun so i think it's it's almost an important horror novel because of that be, just because it does what it does so very very well but i think our share of night is a better novel this is a, I, I think a truly excellent novel um more you know rather than just a good horror novel it's a truly excellent novel full stop um house still a haunted house i think is probably a better horror novel but this is a better horror uh, this is a better novel if that makes sense so i think i think i'm going to go with this as the book i think that should win um do i think it will win i don't think so i suspect that either how to sell a haunted house or holly will win because they've been read by more people um this is you know, more of a slightly more of a, of a of a niche book, I suspect. Albeit it has, you know, it has done very well, I think, for Mariana Enriquez. One other thing to note, actually. Um, so this clearly is the the 2023 Goodreads Awards. This book actually, so originally I think came out in 2019 in in Argentina, um, and then actually came out in the UK last year. So it came out in the UK in 2022, um, but I think it was only published in the US in 2023, um, and therefore Goodreads have counted it as a as a book published this year. But that's a bit of an aside. So yes. This would be my pick, but I don't think it's the book that's going to win. Um, so I'm going to stop recording this now. Um, and then on the 7th, when the winner is announced, I will add in a bit where I react to that. OK, so it is the morning of Thursday, the 7th of December. Uh, I have been told that the winners have been announced uh, on Goodreads. So they're up on the Goodreads page. Um, so I'm going to go in and have a look and film my reaction to the winner of the horror category. I don't normally do these reaction style videos, um, so I've got, <laughs> I've got no idea if my reaction is going to be interesting and engaging for people to watch or not. So we shall see. And apologies for my voice. I've got a bit of a, I'm not sure if it's COVID or a cold or what, but I've got a bit of something. So I'm a little bit croaky today. Right. So let's go into Goodreads. Uh, I'm going to go to the Goodreads homepage and see. Typically, my laptop is being slow. Right, OK, so on the Goodreads homepage, it says the results are in. Check out the winners of the 2023 Goodreads Choice Awards. So I won't talk about the winners of any other category. I'm just going to scroll down and see what the winner of the horror category is. And I can see that it is Holly by Stephen King, which I predicted. So I said it was either going to be House Sell Haunted House or Holly. 
So Holly, I think, as I've said in this video, I think Holly is a really good book. I really enjoyed Holly a lot. I don't really think it's a horror book, though. Um, I think it's one of King's least horror books. Um, it's a thriller. It's a detective story. It's a mystery. It's a good mystery. It's a really enjoyable mystery. Holly is a really good central character, and there's definitely some horrible stuff in there. But I think it's much more a mystery thriller than it is a horror novel. So I am... Um, Whilst I think it's a good book, I am disappointed that it won. Um, and I think it won because of Stephen King's name rather than because it's a horror book. I think pretty much any of the other books on the, on the list or any of the ones I've read anyway are, are... Or maybe not, maybe not, maybe not Rouge. I'm not sure I'm completely convinced Rouge. I would call Rouge a horror novel. Um, but certainly most of the other books I think are more suited to winning a an award for best horror book um so yeah whilst i think holly is a good book i don't necessarily think it's a horror book uh, and i definitely would have preferred uh our share of night to have won or for that matter house of the haunted house um so yeah a little bit disappointed but not at all surprised king is a huge name that was a huge book loads of people have read it so it's no surprise that it's won um, a Goodreads Choice Award. Um, anyway, let's let's leave it there. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are um, about the, uh, the, the 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 whole awards process. Uh, whether you share my my view that it's really a popularity contest rather than a, um, rather than a an indicator of quality. Let me know what you think about Holly winning it. Uh, let me know which other books you've read from that. At that final 10 and what you thought of them um, and as always thank you very much for watching i hope you're safe and well out there i hope you're really good stuff and i'll speak to you again very soon cheerio